Maestro Red Light have become a leading red light therapy company over the last few years. Their panels frequently appear in the podium when I do comparison series, but in a space where a lot of the panels are starting to look and even function the same, innovation is the key. Now today I'm going to be looking at their baby version in this line. This is the Mito Red Light Mito Min. It's a tabletop panel, it comes with a built-in stand, and it is marketed more towards the user who wants a targeted approach, particularly their face. Now be sure to stick around to the end because I do have a conclusion that is going to surprise a few people and may even frustrate some of the bean counters over at Mito Red HQ. Anyway, more on that later. Let's get into it. Okay, so first up, what do we need to know about the Mito Adapt Min? Well, it comes with 72 LEDs. Now, what's interesting is each LED has either 630 and 850 nanometer light or 660 and 810 nanometer light. That means that every single LED has both a red light and a near infrared light wavelength. The new Mito Adapt Min also has dimming functionality, so you can drop the power intensity down from 100% all the way down to 1%. There's no pulsing in this panel, but there is something new, and this is their pre-built modes function. So there's 11 different modes that you can select from with this panel. Each mode powers different LEDs and at different power levels. So for instance, mode one has all of the wavelengths running, which are 630, 660, 810, or 850 nanometer light, or you can go through other modes, which may only just show your red light, or just the near infrared light, or some of the red light and some of the near infrared light, or pretty much any arrangement that you can come up with. What's interesting though is the modes are preset. You can't go in and manually adjust the power intensity. So that's something that we see in the Biomax panels where you've got the slider and you can adjust it. These here are predetermined. Panel is modular, so you could get another one of these or a larger one and clip them together. Uh, and the stand is included in the price as well, which is neat. There's a new control panel that's been upgraded from the previous generation. And there's also the ability to control this panel through an app on your phone, if you want to do that. Speaking of the app, the app also incorporates what I'm calling usage tracking. Effectively, what the app does is allows you to track how often you're using this panel and what mode and also for what duration. The app then asks you questions every few days as to how things are going with your beauty goals or your recovery goals or your skin health. Goals. It's something that I'm still getting my head around and I will be speaking to Scott, the founder of Mito Red Light soon, so I'll be able to ask him a bit more about this. But I think the idea is that they take all this data and then they can find out uh, you know, what works well for people and what doesn't. Okay, so let's get out some of my measuring tools and I'm gonna see how much power is actually coming out of this panel. Okay, so first what I did is fired it up into mode number one, which has all the wavelengths running. And as you can see that, yes, there are four strong peaks. This is showing the different wavelengths, the light coming out from different wavelengths. I then tested each wavelength. Yep, there's a peak at 630, 660, 810. When I got to the 850 though, I noticed the peak was actually around 860 nanometers light not the 850 nanometer light as listed. There was still a good chunk of energy coming in at the 850 nanometer light. It's not a major issue, but some people may want to be aware of that. So what does this all mean? Well, the Mito Adapt Min is going to be great for skin and surface level healing because of the red light it's got in there, but also deeper tissue benefits as well, such as wound healing, inflammation, uh, joint pain recovery, collagen production. As for power, I got a peak power reading of 58 milliwatts over centimeter squared at six inches. The average reading I got was 42.4 and I had a total wattage output of 21.5 watts. When we compare these numbers with other tabletop panels I've recently reviewed, it puts it about mid-pack for overall wattage and that's because of the extra uh, LEDs in this. It is slightly underpowered compared to some of its competitors from a pure power irradiance point of view. Surprisingly, it also has less power than its Mito Pro 300 uh, predecessor, which was quite interesting. Now be sure to subscribe as I'll be sharing all of this data and a really nice, easy to use uh, website, which will be out very, very soon. Also, if you're finding value in all this data, please hit the like button below. It helps me know what you guys like. Anyway, don't read too much into these power figures. It's still putting out plenty of punch and you're getting four wavelengths as well. Finally, I'll mention the EMF figures on this were great and the sound was also really good. So a new generation panel, lots of new innovative features, an app to go with it, a fancy little screen. It's gonna cost a lot, right? Well, it's not too bad. The retail price is $549, and if you use discount code ALEX, A-L-E-X, it will save 5% and bring it down to $521. It's not too bad, given that this is their flagship series and there are some new features in it. Uh, if you're in the US, shipping is free. International shipping ranges from $70 to $150, so look out for that. 
If we take all these figures and look at it from a value point of view, we get a figure of $24.20. That is a little bit higher, especially for a minor red light product, which typically have really good value figures. Finally, it has a three year warranty with a 60 day trial period. All right, so now let's look at what I like and don't like. First up, when I unboxed this, I really liked how there were two manuals. There was a simple quick start guide, then there was a glossy color printed more detailed manual to be honest i think this is the best approach for manuals i think the quick start guide is good because you can read it figure out what you need get going and then later on you can you know find out more details it also came with two eye protection accessories uh which is a bit interesting um and i noticed that mitre red light hammer in the point that look this thing is bright and maybe don't look at it without eye protection i also like that the stand was included and already installed which is a nice little bonus i do like the multiple mode option it's the first panel that i'm aware of that allows you to select not only between near infrared light and red light but what wavelengths in the near infrared light spectrum or the red light spectrum you want to use so for instance you can just have the 660 and 810 in this uh, panel and you can turn off you know the 850 for instance we haven't been able to do that in any other panel before at least that i'm aware of so that is cool and i do like that there is an app if you do want to control it remotely i, I know in the past i've never been big on it but i'm slowly starting to warm up to that okay as for what i don't like unfortunately there's a few things here the app could be nicer it seems very outdated uh despite it being a brand new app i, I just think maybe they've tried to do it on the cheap and it just I don't know it's like something you'd expect from the first gen iphone not not a not a 2023 iphone app there's also a delay between starting the panel from the app and the panel actually running it's about it even says that there's a four to seven second delay it just seems a bit silly and it is a bit frustrating their new 11 mode feature is like i said it's meant to be their big selling point but in all honesty i, I find it a little bit confusing firstly when panels came out years ago with the option to choose between the red light and the near infrared light i never quite understood why this option was there because we know red light is good and so is near infrared light why would you want to turn one off since then i've realized that yes there is a benefit to having that control option but with this new panel there's 11 different options and each option has different like intensities maybe you get full intensity with the near infrared light but just a little bit of red light or vice versa it really does complicate things a little bit. And what's interesting is there's no breakdown as to why one mode is potentially better or more useful than another. It's just simply mode one, mode two, mode three, all the way through to 11. I would probably leave this on mode one, which is all wavelengths going at full power and just be done with it. I think they could have handled that a little bit better. As for the control panel, yes, this has had an upgrade, but like the app, it just seems very outdated. In fact, looking at the text on here, it brings back memories of my arcade days it's really really old like it's just a low resolution screen i mean there's color that's great it does work but it could just be better so that's just one little nitpick about the screen itself yeah you can navigate through the menus and, and select up and down and stuff but why not just simply have a button for time and you just press that to change the time another button for intensity and it just simply scrolls through the intensity another button for mode there's 11 modes in here you actually have to go into the menu change the mode hit save before you can activate that mode there's also a nitpick issue here with the stand the stand is a different color to the panel yes it's white but it's like a pure white whereas this is more of an off white it's not massive but it's little things like this that do sort of bother me uh, especially when you have something like juve or or platinum led and their stands are made with the same material as the panel itself it all ties together really nicely and it looks really good finally we have this new app usage function now i've just got a few things to say here so so bear with me there's so many unknowns here how reliable is the data is someone standing 12 inches from the panel or two inches from the panel are they using it for the whole time or do they just start the app and then forget about it for a few minutes i don't know how they're going to take all this data and all the usage data and say x equals this you know I, I just don't see it next what happens if you do a session without the app i mean that's going to skew the data as well i don't see myself opening up an app running the session when i can just come over and hit go and start using it personally i just don't think it's going to be the hit that mito red light are hoping for i don't i don't see it as a big game changer in all honesty i think mito red light should have taken the money they spent on the app and all this the new modes and put that into their own research and after a few months come out and say look we found that this particular blend of light is helping recovery or whatever it may be or simply paying a team of researchers to look at the published studies and try and decipher it and come out with their own recommendations and then build those recommendations into the panel for instance 
Mode A is for sports recovery. Mode B is for skin health. So really, who's this for? Well, I've come up with three groups. The first is a beauty user wanting a tabletop panel that's safe, simple to use, and packs four wavelengths, not just your typical 660 and 850. I think that'd be quite attractive to this, especially given the slightly larger size that we've seen with the 72 LEDs. Next up, I see biohackers and, and the advanced users. Those users who want to geek out and experiment and really like the advanced features. So these people will probably experiment with the 11 modes. They'll track all their usage. They'll really get the most out of this panel and the app, of course. Finally, I see premium buyers being attracted to this. Why? Simply because it has novel features and it has all the bells and whistles and it's coming from a well-respected company. But $500 is a lot of money. So it's important that we look at the other options in the market. I've got three different options to consider here and remember stay around for the last recommendation because it is going to surprise first up we have the biomax 300 from platinum led now this panel has six wavelengths including two leds in the blue light spectrum but most of the power is going to the 660 and 850 nanometer light the power output in the biomax is a lot higher than the mito adapt min also the biomax does have a nicer control panel and screen next we have the infrared flex mini this has five wavelengths so one more than the mito red panel it also offers pulsing functionality which isn't seen in the mito red range or the platinum range for that matter it's got a similar output to the mito red panel and comes in at a similar price point. However, it doesn't have the app or the customization of Wavelength. Finally, we have the Mito Red Mito Pro 300. Yes, this panel comes from the same company that make the Mito Adapt panel. It's very interesting here because this is their older generation panel and a lot of people have been holding off buying that panel to see what this panel is like. The Mito Pro 300 is the more basic tabletop panel for Mito Red. It's got 60 LEDs instead of 72. It doesn't have all the advanced mode functions. The screen is a lot more basic compared to this. There's no app, there's no usage tracking, but it puts out a similar amount of power. And, and this is the big point, it comes in at $330 after using discount code Alex. That's nearly $200 cheaper than this pedal. It's a huge difference for something that's similar size, same wavelength, similar power. Can you see why it's worthy of consideration? I thought so too and i was quite surprised given how similar they are but how different they are on the price point so if you watched this so far and you're still undecided be sure to hit the subscribe button because what i'll be doing soon is comparing this panel with those three panels i just mentioned doing a head-to-head -head comparison it's going to be a must watch otherwise i highly recommend checking out my mito red mito pro 300 review which you can watch by clicking here